Peggy Lee shot to stardom in 1942 singing Why Don't You Do Right with the Benny Goodman Orchestra. Her talent as a performer, arranger, lyricist, and composer of such songs as It's a Good Day and I Love Being Here With You have kept her performing ever since. She's currently preparing for a month-long engagement here in New York at Jerry Kravitz Club 53, and we're pleased to have her tonight. Welcome. Thank you, Charlie. Nice to see you. I'm delighted to be here. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Now, why, why you, you were um, 50 years in the business, at, was it South Dakota, North Dakota? North Dakota, North. wasn't it? Was North. it Fargo? I'm a northerner. Yeah. And you got an early start. I mean, you were yes. singing when you were, what, 15 or 16 for, for uh, bread? Before, well, 14. 14. Yeah. Fourteen. How'd you, how'd you hook up with Benny Goodman? Hook up. Uh, let's see. I uh, wound up in uh, Palm Springs. Yeah. A lot of things in there. I don't know. Yeah. And uh, and and Lady Duckworth came in with Benny. Right. And uh, they were looking for someone to replace Helen Forrest. Right. And that was hard to do because she's a lovely singer. And uh, so she told Benny that there was a girl downstairs that they were staying there. And it was just before they got married. She was still Lady Duckworth. And uh, that's how it happened. Yeah, you were she how old then? 17, 18? Uh, 17. And I, there was a phone call. And do you know Leonard Feather? No. Well, he's a uh, famous jazz right. critic. And uh, his wife was my then roommate, and uh, I refused to return the call. I thought somebody was kidding me because I was such a big fan of Benny. And uh, finally, she said it really was Benny Goodman. Yeah. So I I finally returned the call, and he said, "Would you yeah. join the band?" And what was the, the the favorite song that emerged from that association? Well, there were a couple. The first one was Somebody Else Has Taken My Place, right. but the biggest uh, one was Why Don't You Do Right, yeah. which I found was Lil Green, who wrote that. I think she wrote it. And uh, I used to play it constantly, and Benny uh, was tired of it. <laughs> and he said, you really like that, don't you? And I said, yeah. ah, yes, I do. And uh, he said, would you like to sing it with the band? We had an arrangement made. And... Uh, I thought it would be a smash immediately, and it wasn't. Yeah. So they held it till a record band, and it happened to come out as one of the two last things that were left in the bank. Yeah. You have continued to perform. You're coming back here once more time to New York, cabaret singing. How has the voice changed? How have you changed in terms of your own musical ear and, and what you like to do? I think it's um, a little uh, fuller and deeper, not much change. Well, there's some, maybe a few, you know, you get those speed bumps in your life. <laughs> yes, you've had <laughs> they, a few of those. Oh, yes, I have. And they add a little character to the voice, I think. Yeah. So does uh, going without sleep. Yeah. Those uh, sort uh, of things. We call that character? Yes, character. <laughs> <laughs> but it has some impact, but it also gives the voice a a quality, a feeling of you've lived in this voice. Yes, and you know, when you're interpreting songs, well, at least it's true for me, that I, I go back and uh, relive some of those things. I don't literally relive them, but I understand what people go through uh, because I've been through it. So therefore, when you sing those lyrics, you think of your own pain or your own joy or your own experience that ag gives you the power mm -hmm. to, to interpret it with more force and, yes. and inflection and, and quality. Yes. Yeah. How many did you write yourself? Altogether, I think I have about 200. Yeah. But, uh, you know, things like Manana, Johnny right. Guitar. Manana, is that the biggest one that, that Manana you... Manana was probably the biggest because in the 40s when that came out, about 47, 48, that sold three million, and it still continues to sell. But so does Why Don't You Do Right? Yeah. And uh, now they're coming out on CDs, and we're capturing a new audience, and I'm glad that there are a lot of young people Would they take the old master recording and then they transfer it to CD? 
Yes. Yeah. Now, you sued Disney once about Lady and the Tramp, right? Yes, I did. And you won $2.4 million, and then they appealed. Whatever happened to that suit? Well, it's... Is it still in the courts? It's still in the... They, when they appealed, it is now in the appellate court being read by the, the judges, all the briefs and yeah. all of the, the papers and everything. And I've almost gotten a law degree out of <laughs> reading all Now, these. you think you're going to prevail? Yes, yeah. I, I well, believe you know, it. You think you'll get some money from it in the end? Why not? I well, have a contract. Right. You had a contract, and what you I said was that they contract. had to get your permission to... Yes. ...to release it. Anything for sale to the public that was... Uh, a transcription yeah. for sale to the public, yeah. and that it was two point four million dollars is not a lot of money to them. What are they no, worried it about? Isn't. It's ridiculous. I mean, Michael Eisner makes uh, fifty million a year uh, for his He's salary. He's made a lot of money from stock options and the rest. Right, plus all the perks. Right, and uh, I think uh, Jerry Katzenberg does the same. Jeff Katzenberg. Jeff, excuse right. me, uh, Jeff. Well, they all made a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> but you know, it's the. Uh, that, that old yeah. thing about you can't take it with you, but I want to leave some for my children. <laughs> yes, you do, and everybody yes. should. Yeah. Now, are you, um, you, why do you continue to perform, though? Not because you shouldn't, but that some would say, hey, you've had 50 years in this business. <laughs> Relax, enjoy it. Don't go up there and sing every night. I mean, is it because of what? I love it. I really love it. You're happiest on stage. Yes, and I have somebody... Uh, accompanying me and he's my musical director now mike renzi yeah and we have such a thing going about music that it's it's really nice to go to work every night and uh i i feel the fans that have over the years gotten to become friends and uh they meet <laughs> at my engagements and yeah uh talk about now, are they are they mainly older people? No. Yeah. Mainly men or women or both? Both. Yeah. Both. Because a lot of men, I mean, I used to say that a lot of men in the audience thought you were singing to them and you'd see these I sort am. Of dandies. I am, and I'm not kidding, you know. You know what uh, we often do, probably this is, uh, should be kept a secret, but no, maybe tell not. Them. It's like I sing to one, and in that way. You pick way, out one and you sing to him. Yes. Yes. And he knows it. Yes. Well, you see, I happen to believe that we are a collective one. Yeah. I think there's only one intelligence, and I think we are part of it, and uh, we use it. We yeah. use that mind. And but in that way, I, I think we're all one, yeah. and that's who I sing to. Yeah. Whose voice do you like? I mean, have you ever seen, heard a voice that you said, if I had that, if I had that one, I was, that's <laughs> the one I trade mine in for? Well, would I say Ray Charles? I, I don't know. Yeah. No, I love Ray Charles. How about Charles. Billie Holiday? Well, I, I could do an imitation of Billie. I know but you I, do. That's why. And I, I was a fan, but I never, uh, some people said that I copied her, but I didn't. It's not, I could imitate her for you, you know. Yeah. Good morning, Holiday. You know, yeah. and it's not me at all. <laughs> Give me just a little <laughs> bit more of that. You old gloomy sad. You can do it, can't yeah, you? Yeah, <laughs> I can. <laughs> I did once with um, Nat Cole was there and Ella, yeah. and uh, I had a whole number that I used to do, and then I would sing both ways. I'd sing some of the songs Billy wrote, and then I'd yeah. sing uh, as myself, and then as her. Yeah. And Nat started to cry, and uh, he went into the office at Basin Street to get a hold of himself because it was eerie and I decided maybe I shouldn't do it because it was eerie for me. I would close my eyes and I'd see Billy's face and then I'd just yeah. sing like her sound. Speaking of that, have you seen, have you heard and seen the CD, I mean, for, for uh, the video for, for Natalie Cole and... Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. And I think Bring Natalie, back memories for you? Yes, very much so because Nat and I were friends, right. and uh, Nat and Maria, and I knew all the children, I knew Natalie when she was a baby, and uh, uh, Cookie, and uh, you know, yeah. it's like, uh, there was sort of a family at Capitol. Peggy Lee will be at Jerry Kravitz Club 53. It's in the New York Hilton, isn't it? Is that yes, where it is. Yes, it is, it yeah. is. And it's a nice, intimate nice club. Place. 
Yeah. Romantic, very yeah, romantic. You get four or five people in there. Well, <laughs> a little more than that. More than the rainbow and stars. Yes, all right. It's good to see you. Good nice to, to see you. Continued Thank success you. to you. Thank you. Uh, you'll be there until what, December? I mean, not when, I mean how long will you be there? De who knows? Who knows? <laughs> you know, get <laughs> no, there. She'll, be, I think probably. she'll sing her heart out for you. And I all the favorites and that. all this. That's right. Manana will be on the. Anything you don't sing, you sing Fever? Yeah. You I sing Manana? You but I've got a lot of things. A lot in of new things, too. A new uh, All right. CD. Got to get out of here. Thank you for joining us.